D Rich TV here at the middle school who's basketball camp in Indianapolis and to my right I have one of the top players in the country all the way from Boston Massachusetts Terrence Clark how's it feel to be here today man uh, I mean it's, it's an honor you know um, I'm having fun right now uh, it's one of the big thanks to Ty Kish and uh, MHACB to have me um, here uh, playing against best competition right now hey now rewind back five months ago nobody knew Terrence Clark was now everybody knows who Terrence Clark is how's it feel man uh, I mean it's a blessing you know I've been working my, my butt off for a long time, you know, trying to get to this spot. Um, you know, I just thank my coaches and everybody that's been around me for, you know, that long. You know, I mean, it's on my grind, and, uh, you know, it's really just a blessing. For all the people who haven't seen you play out there watching this, how would you describe your basketball game? Special. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to say I'm a baby KD, but I play just like him. Uh, built like him, definitely. And, uh, I definitely just get to the basket, you know, get buckets, score on all three levels, and I definitely uh, I'm the best playmaker probably in the class at this height and everything. So, I know you're tired of people saying you a a forward, you a guard. <laughs> like, wouldn't, wouldn't you agree that you you a guard, but yeah. you can't you can't play forward if you need yeah. to? Yeah, I'm versatile. I can play inside, outside, all right, wherever you got me, want me to play. I can play anywhere, but I, I definitely definitely like definitely myself as a guard, definitely as for sure. Point guard. One to two, yeah. I can play either. It don't matter. Now, talk about the offers you have and uh, how's it feel to have those offers? Uh, I got um, UConn and uh, Georgia Tech right now. Um, you know, it's, it's special because, you know, as a kid, you know, you grow up for these times, you know, like trying to get offers and everything like that. But, um, like, that's not really my main focus. I'm really just trying to get better right now so I can get even more, you know, past, you know, UConn and all those schools. But, like, you know, those are good schools, too. Those are D1 schools. That's, a, like, you know, it's an honor to have them. But, um, you know, right now I'm not really focused on it, but it is a blessing. I'm just trying to get better and get even more. Now, this weekend, you came out here with a chip on your shoulder because there was a few people that you went after. You know what I'm saying? You seen them, you said, I'm, I'm going after that guy because they talk about this guy. And you know, just talk about that because, you know, you this is like the first summer that you've really been out here. And now you're targeting everybody and you're about to become a target. So just talk about going after people like that. Um, I mean, you know, it's good competition everywhere, you know. And when you see it on social media, you know, you want to you say, yeah, I got to go get him. So when you come out here to these types of camps, you know, you got to go get him. Uh, on the court, you know, you might talk a little smack and all that, but, I mean, at the same time, you're just competing at, at the highest rate right now. You know, you're just going after everybody, trying to get your name out there and get the spot, just like everybody else is, you know. So it's a it's a big battle. Everybody going for everybody's head. It's just, you know, it's fun. You know, you just come, like, compete with everybody else. I mean, it's just high-level basketball. That's all you care about. Now talk about Boston and how it helped mold you to the person that you are today. You know, there's a lot, you know, there's a lot of haters and then there's a lot of people that's actually rooting for you. So, like, you know, they just made me. As a kid, I used to play out, like, you know, the, on the basketball courts and the playgrounds and everything, you know, get pushed around as a little kid. That's what made me, you know. Everybody say you fall, you got to get back up. That's it. And that's how Boston really raised me. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people that are on my side. There's a lot of people that's not on my side, you know. And I still think both of them because, you know, it just makes me work even harder. Now, everywhere you go is a person that should have made it, that didn't make it. And I'm pretty sure in Boston there's people that was – you know, could have been the next Jordan, but just they never made it out the hood. Just talk about what they maybe told you and, you know, how you look at them and how you try try not to be like that. You know, a lot of people, you know, tell me to keep on my grind and everything because, you know, that, that could be me. You know, as a young young kid in middle school, you know, everybody talking about me now. I mean, anything could just write me down. So a lot of the guys that actually really work good and play in, like, little summer leagues in Boston, you know, they just tell me to keep on my grind, get my grades up and everything. And, I, I mean, I just listen to it, take it in definitely for sure and just learn from it. And uh, stay in the books and everything, like they say. I'll keep it real. I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask you this question. I'll keep it real. Kyrie Irving, 25 years old, uh, got his own shoe deal, plays with the best player in the world for three years, wins a ring, hits the biggest shot in the finals. Do you agree with his decision to leave and become his own man? I, I don't really agree with it, but at the same time, I'm happy he did it because he's coming to Boston. So at the same time, I mean, he definitely was playing with the best player in the league, for sure. But I mean, Obviously, he wants to show himself that he can actually win a championship by himself. So, I mean, with the decision that he made, it comes with big responsibility. So, at this point, you know, he just got to put on for the show. Now, how was it, you know, growing up now with all this political stuff going on? You know, like, the president, he's he's, he's a fool, you know what I'm saying? And he's bringing it into our sports world where we show love, we spread love. How does that affect you, you know, just growing up and watching that stuff on TV and stuff like that? Well, really, I mean, as a kid... I used to watch basketball and I, I see everything, like, you know, the togetherness and everything. And even when we play against each other, like NBA players um, play against each other, you know, everybody's really like, you know, combining and actually showing love. But Donald Trump to really try to like end that is ridiculous. And I, I don't even want to speak on the subject, but 
I mean, right now, everybody's got to come together and stay together as, as young black men and whoever else. It don't matter who. You know, we just got to stay together and, um, you know, just stay together as a community, really. Yeah, we, we definitely targets out here, man. Now, for the people out there, spit some of that Boston slang, man. You know what I mean? I, the way y'all talk, man, it's so different. You know what I'm saying? Say, say some of the words. You've never seen it. You know what I'm saying? Just, <laughs> just explain that, man. Uh, you know, like, you know, you say you chatting, uh, cabin, like, that type of stuff. Like, you lying or something like that. And then, you know, like, uh, you like, never seen it or, like, see you later. Stuff like that. Like, if somebody asked you a pizza or something like that, never seen it, bro. Like, something like that. You know, it's just like, you know, we just come up with it, just have fun with each other, you know. And it's, it's like, it's all love, really, from Boston. And we just come up with something, just say it to each other, you know, and it's just fun.